Okay, uh, good morning everyone and welcome for today's financial hearing with Klaus Olsson. Also like to welcome everyone participating via the webcast and telephone conference. Uh, moderator today is Christian Hellman from Carnegie. He will be back later and lead the Q&A session. But I now hand over to the CEO of Klaus Olsson, Mr. Klaus Balkov. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you and uh, of course let me also then uh, welcome you to uh, our financial report for the, uh, for the first quarter. Um, it's a new venue, uh, it's a new timing, uh, and it's a new fiscal year. Uh, so, and, and looking into the venue, we are very pleased that we are now making or, or having the, the financial report in the, in the right environment in, uh, in our store here in Stockholm. Um, many things are new, uh, but our structure uh, is the same. Uh, we um, have an agenda, we'll go through the financial report for the first quarter. Uh, we'll also go through some of our updates on our strategic priorities. Uh, as, a, as always, uh, also have a Q&A session uh, led by Carnegie. Let me first uh, also give you a quick snapshot of uh, Klaus Olsson, Klaus Olsson today. Um, we have 186 stores in our network in five countries. And uh, also uh, one thing worth mentioning here is that we've just passed the, uh, the milestone of uh, 7 billion uh, turnover rolling 12, which uh, obviously uh, is another, another step for, for Klaus Olsson in our growth towards our vision. But if we then move into uh, the, uh, the quarter uh, in our new fiscal year 14-15, uh, I'd like to give you just a, a quick, quick uh, highlights of what we have seen in the quarter. Uh, I think we have a positive period behind us uh, in terms of strong sales across uh, all markets and all channels. I would also say that particularly uh, our sales outside the Nordics has been, been uh, very positive in this quarter. Um, we have not had the full leverage of uh, our positive like-for-like -like sales in the quarter due to uh, negative currency effects. I'll come back to that a little bit later. But despite these negative effects, uh, we are still uh, delivering a report with a 14% earnings per share increase. So moving then into uh, the key ratios, um, coming back then to our sales performance in the quarter. Uh, we have seen a positive like-for-like -like development. Uh, it's one of our uh, more positive like-for-like -like sales in the first quarter in a very, very long time with a growth of 4%. Uh, I would say making a, a quick comment about, uh, you know, uh, in, in retail, summer is somewhat tricky. It could also be dependent somewhat on the weather uh, conditions. May, June, uh, we had a very healthy, healthy period. Uh, I also think that was also in more of in normal favor of, of, uh, of retail environment uh, in terms of weather conditions. July, though, looking at the Nordics, was, was very, very hot on the other side. Despite that, I think that we were able to keep up our performance uh, in a good way. Um, as I'm sure many of you have seen, that, uh, there, was a, there was a fairly high demand on, on uh, fans and so forth. And, and uh, unfortunately, not only us went out of the fans during the summer uh, due, to the, uh, due to the high demand. Our growth is 8% in total. Uh, and looking then to how we've split this uh, versus our different markets, uh, and I'll go through that. But as a start, just make a quick comment in terms of the share between the markets. We, uh, uh, continue to, to grow the sales share of, uh, of our performance on the international basis, uh, and particularly then the outside, the Nordic is now representing 5% of, of sales. Still, our largest market is Sweden, uh, and um, uh, before we're going into the key ratios, uh, let me just make a, a quick reflection on the Swedish market. Uh, I, would also I would say that if you look at the, the chart here, regarding consumer confidence. Uh, Sweden is somewhat difficult to predict. Uh, it's a bit fragile. Uh, we've seen an upwards trend in the consumer confidence during 2013 and uh, particularly end of the period of 2013. It's been a bit weaker in 2014. Uh, and uh, we'll see where that goes. It's, uh, as you can see on the chart, it's a bit uh, up and down. This is also reflected in one way uh, in the overall retail uh, trade index, uh, where we've seen a somewhat softer period, uh, and obviously could be influenced, of course, that we are up for an election, uh, and that could set some, some, uh, some, uh, uh, 
some turbulence in the market. Uh, but in general, I would say uh, Sweden is, is moving along. Uh, a little bit difficult to predict. Less difficult, I think, to read in terms of that is our performance in Sweden. I think we've had a healthy sales development with an 8% growth in Sweden during the, uh, the quarter. Again, excluding the uh, somewhat very hot July, uh, where we had somewhat weaker performance in, in Sweden, uh, I think we've been able to, to have a good performance across all regions uh, across the countries, uh, uh, driven also as well by a positive like-for-like uh, -like, uh, development. Moving along then to Norway, uh, also the Nor Norwegian confidence it's, is somewhat fragile, a bit up and down. Uh, still, the total level is on a higher level uh, in general, so we are still on a, on a high confidence in the Norwegian market, even if we've seen some opposite to Sweden, where 2013 was a bit weaker. Now it seems like 2014 is, is moving up uh, uh, or going in, in the other direction. Um, this is also somewhat reflected in the, in the retail index in Norway. Last time we talked, we, we, we noted a bit of a more weakened market in, in end of 2013 with a little bit less general traffic uh, to the shopping centers in Norway where we start to see that's coming slightly back. But as you can see as well here, it's uh, also a fragile period. But also uh, for Klaus Olsson, I think uh, Norway has been a positive period behind us. Uh, we have had a very positive summer sales in Norway. Uh, we're up 7% in local currency. We have some, some currency support, so we are reporting an 8% growth. Uh, this is obviously very much driven by a positive like-for-like -like development in Norway as we only have one more store in the network versus, uh, versus last year. If Norway and Swin Finland is uh, somewhat fragile and in some way a little bit difficult to read, uh, Finland is not, uh, I think uh, it's easier to follow in terms of that we are seeing a, a somewhat weak uh, market in Finland. The confidence is down on low levels, uh, continue to, 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 be, uh, to be soft. This is also very much also reflected in the overall retail index in Finland, uh, which is also some of the indications we see from, from uh, other players in the market. I think in this perspective, uh, we are uh, very pleased to see the, the Finnish development in Klaus Olsson. Uh, we are reporting a 7% growth in local currency, uh, reporting in, in Swedish krona 13% due to positive uh, currency effect, but it coming back to that 7% growth with only one more store in the network, uh, as you can, can realize, is very much driven by uh, positive like-for-like -like sales. Um, in our view, we are clearly strengthening our position in the Finnish market, and the Finnish consumer is uh, uh, attracted to what we are offering uh, in the market at this time, which is, uh, which is great to see. UK, uh, also the UK trend is almost also easier to, to, to read uh, with continued positive uh, consumer confidence in the, in the, uh, in the UK market. Uh, that's also reflected in general uh, in the retail overall retail index. Uh, even if the last uh, summer period is a bit somewhat weaker, but the overall trend is going in the right direction. Uh, for Klaus Olsson, we are now reporting our, our performance outside Nordic. Just to remind of that, we, uh, we have uh, added another store uh, outside the, uh, the European into the GCC region on a franchise basis, and as we don't want to share individual stores, we are clustering this, so we call it outside Nordic. Uh, sales uh, outside Nordic has been up 23% in the quarter. Um, we are also highlighting uh, the indication on the UK and the growth in the UK is uh, more than 15% on a like-for-like -like performance uh, in the UK, which obviously is a, a clear step in the right direction, as we're also coming from looking at the, the, the first quarter last year. It was also uh, uh, a positive like-for-like -like in the UK, so we're adding on another 15%. So it's been a, a positive period for us outside Nordic, and particularly in the UK. A uh, few comments about uh, the first store we just opened up uh, in Dubai, early days. Uh, we have seen uh, very positive customer feedback, uh, and in general, 
positive feedback from our concept. So, uh, but again, it's early days. Uh, not uh, so. So we'll, we'll track and we'll follow, and we're developing our concept in, in that region, and particularly also our franchise concept. And we're now looking into uh, our second store uh, in the region. I'll come back to that a bit later. That sums up uh, the uh, sales performance in our market uh, with a 9% growth uh, in total uh, and uh, again a positive like for like uh, sales uh, across, uh, uh, across all markets. Leaving sales, moving then into the gross margin. Um, over the years we've seen a positive gross margin development uh, very much driven by uh, our increase in, in our own sourcing, uh, as well as our, some of our sales mix and our private label, de develop, de private label development. Um, uh, but in this quarter, though, we, uh, we've seen a dip, uh, but it's very much related and linked into that uh, we've had some negative currency effect, uh, mainly from hedging from the Norwegian krona. Looking at the influencing factors in this quarter, sales mix has been uh, neutral. Uh, we've had the same kind of campaign activities, more or less, as last year. Uh, it's been a, uh, the, the previously when we reported uh, a positive freight uh, effect, that is now neutral. We're not seeing that any longer. So, uh, and again, coming back to the, the main difference on the gross margin versus last year is currency. And as you can see on this slide, and I hope you can see it, is that the hedging that we made for last year in, in Jan Feb uh, 2013 uh, was at the NOC level of 116, 117 uh, versus the Swedish Krona, while the hedging we've done this year has been uh, at the low one, 105. Uh, and obviously the gap there is impacting, uh, uh, impacting gross margin. And for you who follow us closely, this is also something that we reported already in the quarter four report. Due to the positive like-for-like -like performance that uh, we've seen, uh, we're also uh, improving our share of sales cost uh, as it, it, it is down to 31.4%, uh, down 1.2 percentage point versus, uh, versus last year. So if I'm summing up the, uh, the key ratios into uh, a margin and operating profit, uh, again, despite the negative hedging effects, uh, we continue to improve our bottom line. Uh, EBIT is up uh, a little bit more than 10%, uh, 202 million sec, and uh, our earnings per share is up 14%, uh, and the difference there is very much related to that we have a lower tax rate in Norway and Finland versus last year. We continue to invest, uh, and the investments in this quarter is somewhat more back to normal levels uh, what we have seen historically. Uh, we are investing in more in, our, uh, in, in the refurbishment of our stores, but also the majority has also been invested in our IT systems as we are now continue to prepare for, uh, for a rolling out of our new IT uh, or ERP platform or, or uh, support system. So the investments are higher uh, in this quarter at 56 million versus last year 17. Um, looking at our cash flow, uh, would like to say that we have a very positive cash flow uh, in this period. Uh, uh, we're coming out with 171 million sec versus last year 109. Uh, the inventories are on the low side. Uh, slightly below last year, which is very much related to phasing uh, of, of some of our products that will now start to come in. Um, the turnover at our distribution center uh, is at an all-time high level of 7.0. Uh, and looking in then at our net, ca net cash situation, it's a clear improvement versus last year of 462 million sec versus last 194. Leading, uh, obviously, into a positive situation now when we are at the time for a, a dividend payout. Uh, as we have shared earlier, uh, the board have proposed uh, uh, to the, uh, this week's AGM on Saturday a uh, 12% dividend increase uh, to 4.75 Swedish krona per share. That sums up uh, the quarter one. Um, 
looking then ahead, and I think that uh, one of the um, more interesting part is obviously how have we started the, uh, the second quarter uh, into this fiscal year and how we started the fall sales. Uh, sales in August, I would say keeping some of the similar trend, um, even better. We are uh, up 9% in SEC, 7% uh, in local currencies, uh, which is, uh, we've seen a positive currency, but I think it's worth mentioning here that this also includes a negative calendar effect of, of uh, slightly, a little bit more than 2%. So uh, trend is, the underlying trend is somewhat better than, than, the, than the quarter. Um, our business in general in all market uh, continues to develop in a, in a healthy way. And as you can see, it's very positive to see that the outside Nordic continue to, uh, to show positive uh, growth. But in this period, we also uh, think it's exciting time. Uh, again, coming back to that, it's pleasing to see that we are now making this report in, in one of our stores. Uh, it's a great environment. And obviously, as you can see around you who, who are here, is that we have a lot of new catalogs out there. There's a new articles, a new range. So it's more like uh, even if the catalog is released uh, and the range is now changing much more frequently than, than uh, historically, but it's for us it's somewhat more of like a kickoff of the full, full range uh, and the assortment that we're now launching, and it's, uh, it's an exciting time. So we've launched the, the catalog. Uh, we uh, have a lot of positive news in the catalog. We continue to develop our, our sustainability uh, in, in, in the range. We continue to develop our own private labels and so forth. So, so uh, we are looking forward to... Uh, uh, to see how, how the customers will, will accept and, 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 and view our, our, our new initiatives. Let me then leave uh, the quarter as well as leave the, um, uh, uh, the update of the start of the fiscal year and make a few comments about uh, strategic uh, initiatives and, and give an update on some of the priorities that we are, uh, that we are developing and focusing on. First of all, our vision is very clear uh, when it comes to that we are developing Klaus Olsson into a leading international uh, retailer. Behind the, uh, the clear mission of that we are helping and supporting the customers to solve many of the small practical problems in day-to-day -day life in a convenient and valuable way. Uh, into that vision, part of what we are working on is uh, a new operating model, franchising, that will give us long-term opportunities to, uh, uh, to grow Klaus Olsson uh, in, a, in, a, in a positive way in terms of how we're also investing so we can handle that. We've started this, uh, this work with the, the first uh, franchise agreement in the GCC region, uh, and we've started with open up our first store. Uh, we are now uh, not only tracking the store, we are also following the market and we are looking into uh, to contracting our next store uh, in the region. But as well, we are also continuing to developing our franchising model so we can package this in a positive way for, for future growth. Our Next market that we will uh, expand into in our own operation uh, is, as we have announced, Germany. Uh, uh, we've shared this before. Uh, in Klaus Olsson, we are working very much in terms of adapting some of our range, adapting uh, some of our structure into a new country. That takes some time. Uh, and uh, really, I don't have much news uh, to share with you on this at this stage, more than we are on track. And uh, we are uh, looking forward, and our ambition is to come out uh, shortly with where our first store will be uh, located uh, that we plan to open up during uh, 2015. But our vision and mission is not only about new markets. Uh, one of the clear strategic areas for us is to uh, focus on our, on our sustainability. Um, uh, we have clearly integrated this work into to our uh, normal business plans. Uh, it's very much a link into all the things we work on. Uh, we are taking steps uh, and uh, would like to share with you that we've, in this August we released our, our separate sustainability report uh, that you can find for you who are, are interested in this area. Uh, it's uh, easy to download from, from, our, uh, from our web. 
But we also want another strategic area for us is what we talked uh, several times about is our omni-channel strategy, where we focus very much to link into our various sales channels to make them work uh, seamless uh, together. And uh, we are taking steps in this. We are upgrading our stores. Uh, that's, an, of course, uh, an, an important part where we continue to develop our stores both in terms of formats, in terms of location, in terms of concept, and our sales solutions. Um, but we're also working on uh, developing our online channels uh, where we integrate and, and uh, this into, uh, into the stores. And we have uh, still many steps to make on this journey, but I think it's pleasing to, to see that not only the... Uh, uh, Rupo effect that we talked about where in terms of that you research online and you go to the store. We see that effect, but we're also seeing an increased trading on the e-com uh, channels. Uh, as we all in, in this quarter, we've seen a 40% increase uh, on our trading on our e-com channels. Uh, so uh, not, the stores are growing as well as the, uh, the e-com uh, business is growing, which is part of the strategy that they together will support each other. Another initiative that, another initiative that uh, we are pleased about is, uh, is our uh, launch of our uh, club class offer to uh, where well, we started that to the, uh, to the Swedish market. We've now passed over one million uh, members uh, only in Sweden. Uh, it's been a fantastic development and it continued to increase. Uh, obviously for us it drives better customer knowledge uh, and marketing efficiencies and for the customers there are clear benefits. And we are now taking this next step and rolling this program out uh, into Finland uh, coming up now in this uh, fall. And finally, uh, as shared earlier as well, we are uh, also looking into to expand uh, Klaus Olsson into a more customer segment and specifically into the uh, business to business segment with focus on uh, uh, the small to medium sized offices. Um, we have a fantastic range. We have our store network around the offices. We have our e-com developed and we've now taken the steps in the preparation and we're now ready to roll this out. Uh, and uh, we're doing that now already next week in, in, uh, in Sweden and Norway. And uh, we really look forward to how we're going to develop this and continue to drive that out now when we have the, the structure in place. So, sum up. Um, in our view, we are leaving a positive period behind us. Uh, we've had a, a healthy sales across all markets and across all sales channels. Uh, and despite currency effects that we have seen in the quarter, we're also improving our bottom line uh, and clearly strengthening our cash flow. And uh, we continue to drive new initiatives uh, and we look forward to uh, all the initiatives that we have in pipeline uh, for further growth towards uh, our vision. That ends up the uh, presentation part. Uh, so I um, welcome Kanege up uh, to, to lead the Q&A session. Thank you very much for that, Klaus. Uh, before I hand the word over to the floor, I'll start off with a couple of questions. And I'll start off with a question on growth. You report a very strong growth number this quarter, 8% up in local currencies. You mentioned a couple of markets that are doing well. Could you uh, try to uh, give uh, some more insight into the growth number in terms of contributing factors? I'm talking about... Uh, price hikes, uh, underlying market development, assortment changes? No, Is it I, possible I, to? Yeah, but I th the, the, I, overall I would say if you're looking into the store part, uh, the stores have done really good in terms of uh, uh, converting uh, more customers. So we've had a, a healthy traffic flow to, to, to our stores, which uh, I think is also reflected in some areas. It's reflected by the market. In Finland, I think it's reflected about some of our initiatives that we are strengthening our concept. Uh, the stores have done a great job in converting that. Uh, so uh, these are the two main factors. Uh, so, so it's been, a, I think, an overall uh, positive uh, development. I also think that we've been able to to, uh, to meet some of the uh, uh, some of the demands from the customers. In, in uh, the summer, demands has been been. Uh, been positive and healthy in terms of product range that we offered. So, so uh, it's been a general, and you can see that when it's really across all the board uh, boards, then then uh, it's a positive development of our range. 
Coming back to Finland, is it possible to, uh, to envision that your do-it-yourself concept works well in an environment where consumers are sort of uh, more uh, aware of what they're spending and how much they're spending and on what they are spending and trying to do no, more I, things on their own? Yeah, I think, well, I think in general we, we, uh, we have a clear price value proposition and uh, as a being a low price retailer, obviously uh, we've been able to come out that and that is appreciated by the Finnish consumers that they, they get great value at Klaus Olsson. Uh, but I also think that we are starting to be better and better to explain who we are and what we, we are offering uh, and uh, it seems like the Finnish consumers are appreciating that. Right. And uh, in terms of your concept, uh, you're about to enter uh, new markets here soon, Germany. Um, you, you've been in the UK for a couple of years. Uh, it's been a bumpy road. Uh, what have you learned from that? And uh, what are you thinking about your plans into to Germany? What will you do differently? No, I think, uh, yes, we have a lot of learnings. Uh, we have learnings in terms of, of uh, you know, how we are launching and how we are driving that. But, uh, but I also think that one of the big learnings in the UK was, which we did not expect was a drastic uh, downturn in the market, uh, which we obviously uh, cannot uh, predict and, and we cannot control in our, on our own. But what we can control is in the way how we drive our operation, how we drive, uh, drive our, our uh, uh, our structure into a new market and uh, we are now starting with a couple of stores in northern part of Germany and we'll learn from that. I think that's part of it as well that we are adjusting some of the range and to meet and to, to really uh, learn by the market before we roll out further. So, so that's the plan. Easy. Easy going, slow, slow and steady. Yeah, but I think nothing is easy. If, if it would be easy, everyone would do it, uh, someone said. So, so, uh, but I think that what you need to have is a, cl a clear, strong, uh, unique concept and Klaus Olsson has that. Uh, and uh, we need then to, to, uh, to make the, the customers in the new market to understand what we are coming to offer. Because, of course, Klaus Olsson is something unique and it's new. You're not used to come into a store where you have the five categories uh, combined together uh, on a uh, high street uh, where you uh, could normally expect maybe a more of a premium uh, uh, retailer. So, so uh, I think the low price at the high street combining all the smart products that we have uh, is a strong concept, but it takes some time for the consumers to get that. All right. Uh, any questions from the floor? Yes, please. Yes. Hi, this is uh, Stellan Hellström with Nordia. Uh, just one question here on uh, uh, the gross margin and the negative impact from uh, uh, hedging contracts. I think that in uh, the previous report you reported uh, some uh, 5 million in uh, uh, unrealized losses on hedging. And uh, uh, I don't really know if, if the, I mean, the mix of uh, Norwegian krona and uh, US dollar seem to have been uh, not moving that much during the quarter. So just explain how how the gross margin could have dropped so much uh, uh, during the quarter from from just that. No, I think it, maybe you and you step in and, and for the what we reported in terms of hedging numbers because you're. Uh, yes, I can do that. Uh, if you look at the report from uh, April, you can see also that we had positive uh, future contracts the year before, and then you have the accumulated effect from positive last year and negative this year. Okay, fair enough. But uh, <clears throat> the, I think the gross margin, uh, gross profit, or gross margin, um, uh, the negative impact um, uh, or the decline in the gross margin was uh, had an effect of around um, uh, 20 million compared to last year. So. Not <laughs> compared to the year before that, so to say. But, but if you see the difference in uh, between the two years, and you also see how the Norwegian krona developed during the first quarter, that would also affect the value of the future contracts. Okay. Uh, j uh, maybe if there's some, uh, something else to comment on in the gross margin, some t uh, in previous quarters you have commented on uh, price mix. How did that uh, develop during the quarter? No, I think the, the mix in general has been neutral versus last year. And I think, uh, again, coming back to, uh, and obviously we can go into the detail there, with the difference of what we had the quarter one uh, last year versus this year, it's, it's very much related into, uh, to the hedging. Uh, the mix has been neutral. Uh, uh, there are no uh, differences in that. Looking at the, uh, uh, the average ticket price for Klaus Olsson is uh, more or less the same as last year. So uh, uh, there are no differences in that. And mix is that price mix, or just mix, or how? 
Well, the mix, when we talk mix, obviously, if you look at them, that's great to be in, this, uh, in, in the store now when we can talk about the different categories and how uh, the 15,000 SKUs are, are moving. And, and uh, obviously, you see some, some effects of that in this uh, quarter. We've had a healthy summer sales. Uh, we sold a lot of fans. We sold a lot of, of uh, products for gardening. And uh, uh, we had a fantastic development of, of uh, the, uh, some of the bicycles and the electrical bicycles and so on. So uh, obviously, but that on a minor part. And then the, the general mixed trend is, is neutral versus the different categories. Uh, uh, obviously, you have the mix effect between the countries as well, uh, but it's not had that much of a big impact. Uh, so so uh, that part is, uh, is not the key difference uh, versus uh, the hedging uh, in the quarter. All right. Uh, just also on the sourcing costs, uh, do you see any uh, developments there that uh, we th should think about going forward? No, I think uh, in general, seems like the overall market is uh, a little bit more positive from, from the, the total economy, uh, which means that uh, we start to see a bit more uh, higher demands, and uh, which is more impacting maybe the, the fright parts, and uh, that it becomes to, to that, it, that it starts to be a bit more, more uh, we see that demand has increased in that perspective. Uh, and in terms of uh, sourcing in general, there are no dramatic changes in our range. Uh, we continue to develop our own sourcing. Um, we've taken steps and we see continued positive uh, steps in that area. Um, but obviously we'll follow that closely, see where it goes. Okay, thanks. Uh, good morning, Niklas Farm, SCB. Um, I'd just uh, like to uh, repeat a little bit the uh, previous question. I simply don't get the big gross margin deviation, uh, depending on where the um, FX pairs are and where they have been. So my question is really, um, when you hedge now, what do you expect for the coming six months in terms of gross margin impact from hedging? <clears throat> Well, again, we have a, have a note of that in the in in the quarterly report, and of course, going from there, we can see the development. Of course, now we have a strength in U.S. dollar. If you look at the dollar, and that of course will impact us, and we also see an increase in the Norwegian krona, and of course, that will we will gain in sales and in gross margin from uh, from sales. But we also have a negative effect, of course, from from the future agreements that we have. But but. Yeah, and uh, but half of the half of the transaction flow has actually already been hedged. Is that it, in June and July? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Can 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 I also follow up on um, uh, SGNA costs? Um, I I would like to understand um, where you think you are in terms of uh, SGNA to sales. Um, I note the very particularly good uh, like for like and the positive operating leverage. Um, do you think that's sustainable uh, going forward? That's one question. And secondly, I, um, I also would like you to elaborate a bit on what you actually think operating leverage is at Klaus Olson today. So let's say if you gain a margin like for like sales point, how much of that do you actually expect to feed through to, uh, to EBIT? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question, obviously, in terms of without uh, um uh, you know, going in too much into details. So, so obviously, when we have a positive like for like, and if you're looking at our in general terms into our own operation, the the, the salary inflation and the rental inflations are, are uh, one driver that drives up the cost level. Uh, having everything else equal, obviously, that uh, uh, will will create the positive leverage for us. Uh, then on top of that, we, uh, we continue to invest and we continue to drive new initiatives. Some of them will uh, initially be, uh, be burning and some, some of them will also give positive effects. So, so uh, it's not a, an easy, quick answer to that. But I think the, the general part, of course, that when we have positive like for like, as we've seen, we are expecting to have a positive leverage on our cost side. 
Then, then to having to say that, to say that, which of course is, is important, is that uh, uh, when you're driving volume, uh, you're also uh, you're also driving some cost related to that volume. Uh, looking at the the majority of our cost side is in the store environment, where you drive volume drives also cost to just to manage the store. But even if you get the positive effect out of that in general, uh, we also have. Uh, variable salaries uh, to all our employees, which means that a positive development also somewhat increase uh, uh, the salary cost, which I think is a positive, and it's positive for our employees, and it's positive for the company. So, so uh, you get some of these effects, which is positive on the, when it goes on the one, one side up, but it also uh, covers it a bit where we, we are able to, to manage some of it when it goes to the other direc direction. Thanks. Just one follow-up question. Is there any uh, cost relating to the uh, launch in Germany included in uh, these results or in these SGNAs? We have some cost, obviously, but they are not material. Thanks. Mm, hi, I'm Eric Sandstedt with Handelsbank. And <clears throat> actually going to follow up uh, with a question on the forward um, hedging contracts here as well. Uh, is it right to assume then, looking at the note in the report, that there will actually be a, a less of a negative impact in Q2 than it was in Q1, based purely on hedging? Uh, yes, based purely on hedging on the, on the contracts we have now. But it also depends, of course, on the, how the uh, currencies are developing. That will influence, of course, if if it's a positive or a negative impact. Yeah. But pure, pure hedging, obviously, you can say, when you're looking at the yeah. difference in Q1 on hedging on, on uh, 117, you can look at the graph coming back to that that I showed on the 116, 117 versus uh, this year 105. Now looking into the hedging for the Q2 and Q3, obviously the gap is not this big. No, perfect. Uh, but then talking more about underlying FX changes here. Could you say anything about the sensitivity you have to a weakened Swedish krona versus a dollar, generally speaking? How worried should we be about that strengthening dollar that we're seeing right now? No, but as you know, we uh, we are our sourcing is is very much linked into the dollar. Uh, now we hedge that as well, which is give us an opportunity or, or uh, able to react. But obviously, it uh, depends on where it goes. Uh, that will have an impact, uh, and then it's up to us to see how we can can manage and control that. But obviously, uh, we are linked into the dollar uh, on on the sourcing side. Um, perfect. Uh, two more questions, if I may. Um, coming back to the gross margin here, was there a counter mix effect? I suppose you have lower margins in the UK, which is now growing clearly faster than the group average? Well, without going into your assumption, obviously, when you have a significant larger sales in one area, uh, that is a country, uh, then you have a country mix, then, then it depends on where they are. But also, uh, I would say, with the outside Nordic representing 5% of our total turnover, it has not such of a big impact. And finally, I know you elaborated on it a little bit uh, on the presentation here, but why do you think you perform so strongly in, in Finland right now in relation to the overall market? I, I, I think that we have, uh, in a structured way, worked to, uh, with, our, uh, with our overall concept in Finland. Uh, we started some time, some, some, some year ago, in terms of improving our communication. We have worked uh, a lot with our stores. In the, in the Finnish market with the commerciality in our stores. Uh, and I think that we are taking steps in that. And, and uh, again, it seems like the, the Finnish consumers are, are, ex are, are appreciating that. And I, and I also think that one thing is also we have taken the step from, from uh, hardly see you other, uh, we've taken as well the step of now coming up to 30 stores, uh, which also I think is supporting that uh, we are now stabilizing ourselves as a, as a true national uh, retailer chain in Finland and, and getting a, a positive impact out of that. Um. Perfect, All right, yes, please. Uh, Niklas Farm again. Um, I just wanted to come back to the uh, P&L and um, uh, the FX. Is there, uh, could you break down the uh, net financial items uh, in this quarter? Is there any uh, FX effects in on that row in the P&L? Uh, no, it's not in, uh, in any effects in the, from the FX in, uh, in financial items. It's all under gross margin. Okay. And could you just uh, elaborate a bit on how you actually um, 
I mean, the net cash position you, you, you're carrying on the balance sheet, how, how is that not translating into a positive uh, net financial item? Please. I mean, the surplus we have in, uh, in our bank accounts, of course, give us an, an interest. Unfortunately, as you all know, the interest rates are very low at the moment. And we also have some, uh, what do you say, uh, possible credit facilities we can use. And for that, we pay a small fee, of course. And that is the net we have under financial items. And then one final question on the operations. Um, the working capital release in the quarter is probably due to the lower inventories, I would assume. And if you uh, take the inventories per store, it's actually a, quite a bit of a decrease year on year. And I was just wondering if you think closer to 7 million per store in inventories, if that's a sustainable level, or if there's any particular reason, um, you know, in, just in current trading, that inventories are a bit lower uh, compared to last year. Thanks. No, I, I think, as I said, some of that has been facing, but it's also uh, a, a positive uh, uh, drive in during the summer as well. Um, uh, and and uh, when we are selling out the, the, uh, the summer items, we are not filling that up. Uh, so, so obviously you have an effect uh, out of that. But we also think that in a structured way, we are improving and working more uh, systematic uh, with our stores in terms of inventory management, uh, using uh, uh, coming back to the to the um, uh, sales solution, but also using planograms and, and in a structured way trying to meet the demands and finding opportunities to uh, to improve our our efficiencies in on inventories in our stores. Uh, obviously, also uh, when you're looking at the average. Uh, you see some of the stores we've added have been smaller stores, and of course that impacts the average in total as well. All right, operator, are there any questions from the telephone conference? I remind you that it is zero one one on your telephone keypad to ask a question. Please hold until we have the first question. There are no questions on the phone. As a reminder, it is zero one one to ask a question. Are there any questions from the web? No. no? We have another question here in the room. Please go ahead. Um, Rutger Smith. Uh, I know that this question is a bit premature, but on the um, franchising model that you are developing, is your intention to use that franchise mostly, say, outside of Europe? or even inside in Europe, or even in a market where you have wholly owned stores. So it's a mixed bag. And um, another question that is somewhat related, now that you intend to go on in Dubai with more stores in the next few years, how do you handle the logistics with uh, goods uh, to that market? Two good, great questions. I, I mean, our, our general direction here is that the franchise concept is developed where we are not uh, uh, seeing that we're going to set up our own operation and where we see that is more efficient or, or more, I would also say, normal in that, in that market. So that is our general direct direction. Uh, that uh, said, it's, it's not only outside Europe. That could also be a market within Europe, but uh, that is depending on market by market. So that is the general direction on that one. Uh, then related to your uh, question on logistics, obviously, um, uh, as we've said, we're going to set up two stores uh, initially now to, to learn about the GCC region, uh, pending on the outcome of that, and then when we start to roll out, that will also trigger that we are need to work on the, uh, on the sourcing. Um, and, and obviously, uh, from that part, we can work on the warehouse. We'll have a small warehouse supported by the third party today. Uh, logistically wise, uh, setting up an operation where we are taking all the, some of the goods from Asia, we could already drop that in the region before it comes up here. So, so that is obviously on the plan to see how we can optimize that. Steps that we've not really taken now due to it's just one store and, and uh, it's not that efficient for just one store. Any further questions from the floor? All right, there seems... Well, then we have... No, we are out of question, it seems, at least on the gross margin. <laughs> uh, I'll finish up with one question. Uh, August, uh, growth of 7% uh, in local currencies. 
can you say something about markets or uh, developments? Uh, any comments on, on the August sales number? I, uh, I think, uh, you know, coming back to that, it was also a negative calendar effect of a little bit more than 2%. It's, uh, it's a positive start of the quarter two. Uh, if you see the numbers by market, we are uh, having a positive development in the Nordic uh, markets uh, combined. Uh, and by market, uh, we're also seeing a positive development uh, outside Nordic in general terms. So, so uh, uh, I would say we are, we're keeping the trend. Uh, we... Uh, uh, obviously, somewhat that also uh, the early days of August with the really, really hot weather was not that supportive, but that has now been picked up later part of the month. So, so uh, now I would say that uh, we've had a good start. Sounds good. All right, we have to wrap this up. The, the store, this store is about to open up for business. Yes, we need to. Uh, <laughs> but of course, you are. Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, uh, just, uh, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for, for being here and uh, oh, thank, thank you, you for having us. Thanks, and I also would like to thank you for coming to this early time. I know it was a new time, uh, but I think we all appreciate that. It's also a new place, and we are really pleased to see you in the store. And obviously, salesperson as we are, uh, I know Magnus, our store manager behind us, stands there, and he's obviously extremely happy for you to go around the store and, and, and also shop a little bit, uh, obviously. So uh, welcome, and thank you for today. Thanks. <laughs>